Hi everyone, I'm Amy Eberling, Executive Director of the Salish Sea School, and I would like to welcome you back to our Students and a Scientist Lecture Series. We are so passionate about enabling pathways for students to get involved in marine conservation and really use their voice to make a difference. We hope these interviews motivate you to continue that journey. I am so excited for today's guest, known as the Fin Guy. He can recognize virtually any Eastern North Pacific killer whale at a quick glance. Dave curates the Killer Whale Photographic Library and is the face behind thousands of stunning and impactful orca photos. His body of work, which has stretched over three decades, is vital in ensuring the long-term health, recovery, and conservation of these magnificent animals. So without further ado, Dave Elifritt. Hello, I'm, I'm Dave Elifritt, and I've been a uh, researcher and a photo ID specialist at the Center for Whale Research on San Juan Island um, for the past 30 years now. It's looked like that. Well, since we started scrapping. My, my main job with killer whales is photo identification and telling these individuals apart. Before I even had a chance to do whale research, I, I tried to acquire every single published whale photo ID, killer whale photo ID catalog that had been published. Well, I probably should have been doing my homework, but instead I'd be looking at pictures of dorsal fins and learning my dorsal fins. So when I arrived, I knew my whales pretty well. I found a niche at the right time and place. There really weren't many people who knew every single whale. I spent a lot of time at, back when we were shooting film uh, looking at photos over light tables. Um, other people started hearing about this guy who knows fins and uh, I would get contract work with other researchers doing photo identification with other populations of whales and learning, learning new whales. We'd love to hear what led you to the special work you're now doing. I was born and raised in Columbia, Missouri. I remember looking forward to seeing the movie Namu the Killer Whale. I saw that when I was three years old and I have been hooked on killer whales ever since. Spent uh, my childhood, which was the 70s, um, trying as hard as I could to collect as much whale information, especially killer whale information. It was really hard to come by during those years. I actually first heard about Ken Malcolm when I was 11 years old. I had a subscription to a National Wildlife magazine and there was a killer whale article on it in 1978. There is a picture of a whale in front of Seattle that was J3 who ended up being a very important whale in my life. The first photo ID photo ID'd whale that I ever knew existed and uh, and Ken took the picture um, and uh, and so uh, anyway that that just uh, helped fuel um, my interest in, in whales. Um, I, uh, I saved up my money and did a trip uh, when I was in high school to northern Vancouver Island and saw my first killer whale. And I, I learned about an organization called Earthwatch, which I believe is still out there. Um, and they're a volunteer organization where you sign up for trips and uh, help real researchers do real research. and. Uh, I did that one summer um, in my early 20s, um, late 80s, and uh, got invited back the next summer as staff, working for Ken, and I've been here ever since. Anyway, it's led to a lot of fun times with the whales, a lot of opportunities to work with whales in other places, and uh, it's uh, been a dream come true. We'd love to hear about a normal day in the field. What's it look like for you? So Orca Survey is a small boat project where we go out in small boats and take our identification photos and other data on the, on the local killer whales. Um, we rely on sightings from land-based uh, homeowners and, and the whale watch industry Generally, our, our encounters 
in modern times probably last somewhere between one and three hours. We're not out there all day anymore. So when we finally get a report of whales, we'll, uh, we'll grab our gear um, and uh, figure out who's going out on the boat and uh, head down to Snug Harbor and head on out. And usually we're, we're on the radio talking to everybody else who's out on the water, all the, the whale watch fleet, other researchers. So we're communicating with them. Our main goal every day when we go out on the water is to make sure, if we can, get a photo of every single whale who is present that day. You know, some days the whales are so spread out or the conditions just aren't right and you're not going to find everybody on every day. But most days what we want to do is make sure we at least get one decent picture of every whale that we see every day. And so we're always keeping an eye out on the general health of whales while, while we're out there. But I mean, we're, what we hope to do it on most days is get out and document, you know, hopefully something neat like a new calf. But that happens so rarely anymore. And, you know, if you're lucky, once or twice a year do you get a new calf. Occasionally, we'll also collect uh, fish scales and uh, basically recording any other um, interesting behavior data while we're out there. And then we come home, all the post-encounter work has to be done. We have to get our photos on the computer and start analyzing it. What is your favorite part of your job? Of course, the best part about this job is being able to spend time with the whales. I mean, the whales are everything I've always wanted them to be as a little kid, and they're fun to be around. It's, a, it's fun to watch them grow up. You know, when you see a little calf and you see them get big and if it's a girl, they'll have their calves of their own or seeing a little tiny little thing turn into a big, huge male. And it, it just, it's very addicting. Um, and, um, and so you find ways to stay. And, and there's not a whole lot of money in this job. You can, you'll have enough money to survive, but you won't get rich. And uh, the whales make everything worthwhile when you have a good day. What is your least favorite part of your job? Even when you get exactly what you want in life, you're going to find that there are certain little things that make it less perfect than you would have liked. And the, uh, with anything that you do in life, that is going to happen. But when like I said, the whales make everything all right, but uh, you do have to deal with other stuff. And I, probably my least favorite thing about this lifestyle is, oh, the disappointment in finding out that there are, there's a lot of politics in whale research, or probably charismatic megafauna in general. You just kind of have to roll with all that stuff and don't let it spoil things for you. Uh, concentrate on what's important, which is the whales. Tell us about your favorite southern resident orca. In terms of favorite whales, I, I, I've had a lot of them over the years, and the problem with having favorite whales is if you stick around long enough, they're eventually going to start dying on you. So you have to pick new favorite whales. But my all-time favorite whale, is I, and I mentioned him earlier, was J3, who was in an open-saddled adult male, and... J-Pod, he was <clears throat> one of the, the three males in J-Pod from the beginning of the study in the 70s through uh, the mid-90s and uh, just uh, was always around. And, and he was the first whale I ever knew that had a letter number designation to him. And um, one of my, my very first summer, he breached for me and my very first card that I ever got made was a picture of my favorite whale breaching for me. So he, he, uh, he was a very important part of my early years of the study. And, and because of that, and why I like, I like all the Southern residents, but I, I do like the matriline that he was the most he, he was associated with the J-16s. He was J-16's probable older brother. Um, and it was <clears throat> really neat to see that J-16 had a 
son J26, who is very reminiscent of J3. And um, I actually have a picture of when J26 was a calf next to J3. Um, it's pretty cute. But um, J26, why he, he doesn't look exactly like J3, but he, he is so reminiscent of him. The body shape is very similar. They both had long, flat backs, and uh, um, the open saddle is kind of obvious. And, and his fin isn't exactly the same, but it's reminiscent of. And um, so it's just kind of neat that um, this master line is kind of best known for its open saddled adult males. And, and uh, anyway, it's, it's too bad that the J16s have lost their most two most recent little ones but uh, there's hope that they'll keep expanding over the years but um they're they're pro historically they're they're my because of j3 they, they, that matter line has a very fond spot my, my heart I hope that when you hear the different roads our guests have been on, it gives you hope that you can do anything uh, with the same grit, positive attitude, compassion, and drive to make this world a better place. I want to thank Dave and the team at Center for Whale Research for helping get this video to us uh, during these crazy and unprecedented times. Follow along and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have some amazing other guests lined up. Thanks for watching. <laughs>